Hi, it's the Irish Gypsy here to bring you your September 2017 general readings. Thank you so much for your patience and waiting for the last few signs. I had some camera issues I had to resolve. So I am recording uh, the last few signs right on September 1st, which is the month we are looking at. So as always, thank you for your likes, your shares, your subscribes, your support, feedback, and comments. I am still in Poland, although I will be back in the States um, in about another week and a half. Uh, so thank you for those of you who uh, continue to follow my channel and continue to reach out for personal one-on-one -on -one readings, uh, no matter what corner of the globe I'm in, as those of you who follow follow me regularly No, I do work uh, no matter the same no matter where I'm traveling to so thank you so much for continuing to reach out for one-on-one -on -one readings and to my regular clients as well if any of you are interested in a one-on-one -on -one reading with me and you haven't read with me before you can go to my YouTube channel's homepage even though I know YouTube has changed the layout again uh, you can click on the <coughs> about um, tab or button or the little work wheel uh, but I think it's the the about uh, with the word which just says about or description and for more information and it also has my email address there which is maggie the number one mcguire at gmail.com i would be delighted to do a reading with you uh, i do readings full time five to six days a week it is what i do so turnaround time is pretty fast it's usually anywhere from one to two weeks almost always within a two-week period of time we can schedule a reading for you live or recorded i do a wide variety of readings love and romance of course compatibility charting, uh, career overviews, year uh, life overviews, channeled messages, gift readings, and packages of monthly or bi-weekly readings as well. So email me if you're interested and uh, we'll set something up for you. These are general readings and there's many of you watching so of course they're not going to mean the same thing for everyone watching. Uh, and check your rising and your moon sign videos as well if you know them and if you can uh, they may play out a little more predictively for you than your sun sign video and it just gives you additional insight and clarity into what's going on in your life so try to watch all three if you can so we're looking at september 2017 this reading is for the air sign of libra for the month of september 2017 let's see what's going on with our librans for september 2017 so Libra, we begin with the Five of Wands, followed by the Four of Swords, makes sense. The Two of Wands, followed by the Five of Pentacles. The Three of Wands, followed by the Ten of Cups. And Strength, followed by the Nine of Pentacles. From the bottom of the deck, your crowning card representing overall energy and guidance is the Five of Cups in reverse. So this is coming out pretty clear, um, pretty simple, pretty clear reading so far. I think for a lot of you, um, this is going to resonate in the more tangible, maybe pentacles in an area of your life, which is like job, work, career, finances, projects. Uh, but, but there's a link I'm seeing to home and family as well. Um, those things do affect our home and family for those of us that do, you know, have homes and families. And, and even if you don't have families, you have your own home and your own life anyway. Job and career certainly to affect that as we live in a world where the bills have to be paid. So your overall energy and guidance, I'm going to start with your crowning card, uh, Libra. We have the Five of Cups in reverse. So Cups is water energy, and it usually manifests in the emotional, feeling, relationship area of our life. The Five of Cups in the upright position would represent uh, a focus, a hyper-focus, an over-focus, if you will, on some kind of loss or grief or negativity in our life, uh, which is what this man is doing. He's All of his attention and focus is on these three goblets, which are spilled over and tipped out. Um, representing loss in his life of some kind or grief, uh, basically sometimes uh, often being stuck in the past. Uh, behind him are these other two goblets, still upright, beautiful, full, but he's not noticing them. He's not paying attention to them because his focus is only on uh, what's no longer there or what's changed, what he's lost or what he feels has been taken away from him. And the advice is uh, always to take a look around that there are still things in life to be grateful for and also that you might miss any opportunities which might be there already in your environment or may be coming because your focus is only on 
what no longer is. For example, because I think a lot of this is in that, that tangible area of your life, Libra. This could represent maybe some of you may have recently lost a job and that's all you can focus on and that's all your energy is kind of centered on that. We can't look in two directions at once. We can't look backwards and forwards at once. So there may be other uh, job or work or career opportunities uh, that you may be missing or may miss out on because you're focused, you're just dwelling only on, you know, what you've just lost or what you no longer have in your life. In the reverse position, it can represent, you know, for some of you, if you take feedback and guidance that you can lessen or negate this or avoid uh, some kind of loss or grief, but it can also represent um, in the reverse position for some of you that the advice is strongly do not focus only on the negativity or something that you may have lost or has, has changed. Uh, uh, for you because you may miss out on opportunities in the month of September 2017. We have at the beginning of the month, time being somewhat relative as I always say, we have the Five of Wands, Fire Energy, with the Four of Swords, Air Energy. Fire governs wands. It's a very uh, fluid, action-oriented energy in the suit of wands usually manifests as in change and movement and action, power, sometimes career or artistic endeavors and pursuits as well. But the five of wands, five can represent conflict, kind of that push and pull energy. The five of wands uh, is a card of conflict. It can represent external conflict with other people or internal conflict with yourself or a combination of both, uh, ending August going into the beginning of September. For external conflict with other people, it usually represents conflict which is kind of petty in nature, circular arguments, or if it's about a conflict with one person, it's like the same argument. You keep fighting about the same thing over and over again. They're not like horrific knock you down fights, um, but they're endless. It's kind of like nobody wins, nobody loses. There's never any clear path or any solution, just kind of circular squabbling energy and conflict going back and forth, uh, external or internal. But usually it's a combination of both as well. Now, the Five of Wands is paired with the Four of Swords, which is air energy, and this is more uh, energy about what goes on up in our heads. The Suit of Swords is mental, cerebral stuff, how we look at things, our belief systems and outlooks, and how that affects the way we communicate. The Four of Swords <laughs> is very clear advice. It's almost an, a, an opposite or contradictory energy to the Five of Wands. This is about withdrawal from conflict, a temporary withdrawal from conflict, uh, to take a step back, maybe kind of go within, recuperate recovery. It can also represent feeling really tired, really worn out. Um, but it does represent needing to take a break or have respite from conflict, which is what this man is doing. You can see he's still dressed for battle. He's still wearing his chain mail and his armor. He's uh, got these three swords pointing down at him and his own lying close by his hand should he need it. But for the time being, he's not engaged in battle. He's not engaged in conflict or challenge. He's taking a time out to recuperate, recover, maybe get a different perspective, maybe seek some guidance, uh, whether that's external guidance or just kind of internal mulling things over. But it does represent a withdrawal from conflict. So um, for those of you, uh, Libra, again, I, I think some of you, this, I think a lot of you, this has to do with job or work. I'm getting that. Some of you, it's maybe a specific work situation. You may be involved in some conflict with other people at work. Uh, or just work in general. Uh, some of you may be um, getting the message that you're... somebody's company just got bought out or you're being downsized or something. There's changes and shifts going on at work. Uh, the Five of Wands can sometimes represent competitive energy too. So there may be that uh, incoming in your workplace. It feels like there's a lot of changes in work and job as well. Although it could be a specific challenge or specific conflict in a work situation or a work environment as well. Although some of you may have recently lost your job or are trying to transition into another job and it may be in a competitive field or market as well. The same holds true for projects of any kind as well, particularly those of you who are looking for funding or investments in projects. And there's a sense particularly for those of you for whom this is going to resonate in job and career path, there's a sense that your long-term goals are shifting and that you're thinking about making long-term goals 
different. Uh, you may be thinking that a job that you're currently in or a career path that you're currently on just really isn't realistically providing enough for you, potentially for you and your family as well. There just isn't enough. And so you're thinking you're thinking about your long-term goals. Do I need to change my long-term goals? Do I need to shift um, jobs, companies, or even career paths entirely? Which is what the next two energy, the energy of the next two cards is about. We have the two of wands followed by the five of pentacles. So the two of wands is about coming to a crossroads, needing to choose one path, needing to make a decision, perhaps set something in motion, trying to figure out which path to choose. And the key to choosing the right path or even knowing what the right path is, is in long-term thinking and planning. It's about looking down the road. What's my big picture goal here? If this is resonating in the job, work, career path portion of your life, where do you want to be in five years and 10 years and 15 years? Set that definitively in your mind and it makes the choosing the path of getting there uh, more clear. If it, when you ch look down the road, don't consider the things that are in your present today. Figure out what your long-term goal is, your long-term vision and your dream is. Set that definitively in your mind and then look at what's going on in your life at present. If the things that you're involved in and are investing in uh, and are engaged in at present don't move you towards those goals or at least not stand in the way, then these are the things that you know that you have to pare down. It makes choosing the path, making a decision, particularly if you have to change long-term goals, switch jobs, switch companies, maybe consider um, getting educated for a different career path, makes it a little bit easier, quite a lot easier if you know exactly where you're headed. Otherwise, how do you know which path to choose? Because the two of wands is paired with the five of pentacles. This is earth energy. And so the energy of the suit of pentacles usually manifest in the tangible concrete uh, world we live in, that area of our life that usually deals with things like money, finances, job, property, work, assets, etc. The five of pentacles is a card of insufficiency and lack or the fear of insufficiency and lack. It can represent um, not having enough money, not having enough money to pay your bills or constantly being stressed out by money issues. On an energetic level, if you translate this into the relationship portion of your life, it can represent feeling rejected, not good enough, um, shut out in the cold, or even being blackballed or blacklisted or rejected from a larger group. Um, or institution of some kind. For some of you that perhaps are in a very stressful work environment or job and there's a lot of competition or a lot of conflict with the people around you, this can represent that maybe you've reached a point or something's happened where you just, maybe people aren't speaking to you or you feel like you're on one side and other people are on the other side. There's just all this conflict going on. You're being asked to take a step back, re-examine your long-term goals and see if you need to make a shift, particularly if you're not making enough money, if, if, if the environment is just too stressful or if you're feeling like you no longer belong there or fit anymore. Now next to that we have the Three of Wands followed by the Ten of Cups. So the Three of Wands, this is a, actually a very great transitional reading because the energy just kind of steps up here. So we have the Two of Wands which is about re-examining or, or choosing long-term goals. Um, maybe some of you will decide to keep your same long-term goals. Maybe some of you are deciding to shift them but there's a sense of of not being enough in your life, whether it's you yourself on an energetic level or whether it's just money or finances or a combination of both. So you're looking at long-term goals. You're trying to set uh, definitive long-term goals or perhaps changing the way, changing your long-term goals. There's this mulling over internal energy. So next we have the Three of Wands. So the Three of Wands, of course, comes after the Two of Wands. Two of Wands is where you're you're trying to, to pick a path and it's all about your long-term goals. What's your, your vision like down the road. So the three of wands is you've, you've you know what your goal are. The Three of Wands is now you're starting to put action to it. You're starting to lay the groundwork for it. You're starting to do the baby steps. Maybe for those of you who are considering switching career paths and you can't do it all at once because you can't afford to stop working and just do something else. This could be maybe doing homework and research on, okay, if I want to do something different or if I want to switch jobs or career paths, what do I need to do? Do I need to get extra certification or training? Where do I go to do that? Can I do it at nine and still go to work? Or if I want to switch uh, to 
to another company or if I'm just making a change or if I'm trying to start a new project of some kind um, or the religious or spiritual path I'm following or even the religious the relationship outlook and perspective I have because you know there's a lot of you watching this is an, I'm feeling it the strongest in job work career project uh, but for some of you this may resonate in the religious or spiritual part of your life or for some in the relationship aspect I, I try not to just limit it to just one because of course not everybody's in a relationship and not everybody's working and everybody's doing the same thing so this is about laying the groundwork this is about doing the footwork and starting to take the beginning steps towards whatever that long-term vision and goal is that you've decided on uh, because it's all it's all about bringing more balance and continuity and harmony to you and there's a connection to home and family too because that three of wands is paired with the ten of cups so we have this emotional energy here again tends to represent the ends of cycle the coming full circle the fulfillment energy of something so the ten of cups would represent the uh, coming full circle the fulfillment of happiness joy but particularly in connection with home and family this is kind of like uh, the artist who, uh, sorry about the glare on these cards, the artist Cyril Marchetti who designed the Gilded Tarot uh, depicted um, the artwork on the Ten of Cups as if it were what you were coming home to at the end of the day, that place where you feel you belong, that, that place in life and, and not just physically but energetically in life where you feel everything's uh, coming together. Um, even on challenging or difficult days you still get up and go through your day and go home and go to bed at night feeling like you're on the right track. Things have finally come together. There's a fulfillment sense in your life uh, and you have, it's, it's one of the happy home, uh, sometimes called the happily ever after your happy home card. Um, it represents family unity, family harmony. It can represent marriage, blessing, um, uh, the birth of a child as well. But just kind of that, that cycle, that fulfillment of a cycle. But because it's cups, cups is about relationships and emotions and feelings. So it's about a completement and fulfillment uh, in an emotional way uh, with a connection to home and family as well. You can see this beautiful rainbow of cups symbolizing um, all your emotional cups are upright and full. And again, um, I think for a lot of you too who are re-examining long-term goals, uh, if they're in relation to the job that you're in, the career path that you're on, perhaps a company you're working for, perhaps just in the relationship, just in your life path in general, uh, because there's so much conflict going around, whether it's with a group of people or one person or within an intimate relationship or with an, you know, a less personal, uh, maybe more form maybe more work oriented uh, set of relationships there's a sense of of things not being the way they used to be or you're feeling like you're not having enough what you need whether that's money or whether that's emotions love a sense of belonging again there's so many of you watching it's going to resonate in different areas of your life but the energy is the same there's a sense of lack of insufficiency overall looking at long-term goals re-examining goals perhaps setting some different ones and actually beginning to lay the groundwork because what you're working for is balance unity harmony within yourself and also within whatever you call home whatever you call family too as well and the overall advice, of course, that Five of Cups in reverse, don't get stuck on the negative. Don't get stuck on the lack, on the insufficiency. This is about choosing a new goals and definitively starting to lay the groundwork and moving forward so that we can make effective changes in our lives and reach that happy goal. That's what it's going to take. And some of you may have to go your own way and go on your own towards the end of the month, maybe the beginning of October, because at the end of September, we have strength, beautiful combination of cards, strength and the Nine of Pentacles. The energy, uh, it, it's almost as if these cards are just holding hands together. Strength is um, uh, and lovely, beautiful feminine personifications on them too. Strength is it's about coming to terms with things, coming to terms with yourself, facing what your fears are, your doubts, your insecurities are, whatever this Five of Pentacles represents too, whatever fears are, or insufficiencies, whatever's lacking, facing that head on. Some of your fears will turn out to be nothing more than dust bunnies under the bed. Some of them may be more valid and need more, you know, technical work and action to deal with, but it's about facing what your fears are, um, coming to grips with those, um, and coming to a sense of acceptance, self-love on what you can change and what you 
can't change and holding your head high and moving forward courageously into your future, uh, which is what this woman is doing because she has tamed the lion, tamed the savage beast, which is representative or symbolic for fears, doubts, insecurities. What are you afraid of? What's the insufficiency? What keeps you locked into the same pattern, which is unhappy for you? Face that head on and have the courage to shift it, to change it, and to do something about it. Strength is paired with the Nine of Pentacles. Great card. This is independent self-sufficiency, self-empowerment. It's a great accompaniment to the Strength card. You can see the woman on this card is standing in her garden. She's dressed in this beautiful gown. It looks like silk. She obviously has the resources to take good care of herself, and she's enjoying. Uh, she's in a beautiful garden, enjoying uh, all of these things around her. She's surrounded by things which imply not just a sense of physical, financial, monetary a sense of abundance and prosperity, but just being at that place where you feel really good. You feel like everything has kind of come together. You've worked long and hard to build up uh, these resources, these things that you're enjoying, and now it's it's the fruits of your own labors you're enjoying, which is what she's enjoying. It's independent self-sufficiency and self-empowerment because all of these things she's enjoying, she's worked for herself. She's earned them herself by her hard work, her talent, her her, you know, facing her fears, her doubts, her insecurities, and going for it and making a place for herself and being at that place where she, she's good on her own. It's sometimes called the happy single successful woman card, but uh, number one, it's not, doesn't need to be gender specific. And two, it doesn't really matter if she's single or not. Energetically, this card represents being at a place in your life where, um, you're able to take care of yourself uh, just on a variety of different levels, feeling really good about who you are, where you are, where you're going, um, what you've built up for yourself, whether you're with somebody or not, it doesn't really matter. You don't feel the need to be with somebody. And if you do, you'll choose them carefully and take your time because you're good with who you are and where you are in life uh, because of everything that you've gone through and everything that you've fought for and, and, and the courage that you've had to move through fears, doubts, insecurities, insufficiencies, and lacks and lack as well. Um, beautiful, beautiful, very inspiring energy and a lovely progression throughout the month, uh, Libra. So Libra, that pretty much wraps up your September 2017 reading. Thank you so much for watching it. I hope that some of you at least have found it helpful and given you some food for thought, perhaps some insight and guidance, because that's why we do these. Again, if any of you are interested in any personal one-on-one -on -one reading with me and you haven't read with me before, you can go to my YouTube channel's homepage, click on the uh, About button or Description uh, or the little tool wheel and uh, for some more information and my email address, which is... Uh, M-A-G-G-I-E, the number one, M-C-G-U-I-R-E at gmail.com. I would be most happy to do a reading with you. I will see you all again in a couple of weeks for the September 2017 mid-month readings. And until then, Libra, as always, I wish you joy, peace, blessings, and a happy life. And I hope to see you back here again soon. Take care. Bye-bye.